Hello, welcome to The Update. I'm Susie Thompson. Royal fans have had their first glimpse of King Charles and Queen Camilla in Australia. Flags, paper crowns and flowers could be seen in the crowd in North Sydney. Judy says this isn't her first time seeing His Majesty up close. I saw him first over 50 years ago when they first started doing walkabouts in Collins Street, Melbourne. I was working for a bank and I thought he was gorgeous looking. Day three of the Royal Tour will see their majesties visit the nation's capital and will include a trip to the Australian War Memorial and Parliament House. Indonesia has a new president with Prabowo Subianto being sworn in. The 73-year-old secured 60% of the vote in February's election. Anthony Albanese was unable to attend due to the royal visit. A compensation decision will be handed down in the federal court today against Qantas over the sacking of 1,700 workers during the pandemic. It comes after the airline's action was found to be illegal by the High Court. Nick McIntosh from the Transport Workers Union says they just want to put the whole sorry saga behind them. We're hopeful that under the new leadership of Qantas, uh, hopefully they've turned a corner here. This is a real test now for the new leadership uh, is if they can resolve this matter as quickly and as fairly as they possibly can. Two passengers have died in a head-on crash on Queensland's Diagila Highway. They were passengers in one of the vehicles. The driver is fighting for life in hospital, while the other driver suffered minor injuries and is assisting police with their inquiries. Thieves have stolen up to $10,000 worth of jewellery in a daylight robbery in Melbourne. The two men smashed glass cabinets and snatched the items from a store in Craigieburn. Detective Sergeant Adam Foley says such a brazen theft is worrying. Pretty disgusting that they feel as though that they can walk into a busy shopping centre on a Sunday morning and um, you know, cause panic and hate, you know, havoc to people who are just going about their normal business. More than 30 kilograms of cocaine has been found inside a refrigerated shipping container in Sydney's Port Botany. With an estimated street value of around $10 million, Border Force is urging anyone with information to come forward. Sport and entertainment is next. In sport, Tim Zhu's boxing career is at a crossroads after suffering a stunning third-round defeat to IBF junior middleweight champion Bakram Murtazaliv. The Aussie was annihilated, knocked down four times in three rounds. In netball, Australia has suffered its worst Constellation Cup loss in more than a decade, going down to New Zealand's 64-50. The Silver Ferns' 64-goal tally marks their highest score over the Diamonds ever in regular time. And New Zealand has also won the women's 2020 20 World Cricket Cup. They've scored a 32-run win over South Africa in the final. In entertainment news, Liam Payne's father has flown to Argentina to visit the site where his son died last week. In emotional scenes, he thanked fans and kissed pictures of his son as he paid his respects at the site of a makeshift memorial. And British Olympian Sir Chris Hoy has announced his diagnosis with terminal cancer. The six-time cycling gold medalist has been given between two and four years to live after doctors discovered a tumour in his shoulder. And that is the latest from the Nova podcast team. We'll see you later on for another update. I'm Susie Thompson.